Welcome back to my channel. We're doing actually doing a virtual uh, VMware workstation install today on a PC that one of my um, YouTubers actually um, built over in, in the US, and I'm based in the UK. So it's just using some remote control software called TeamViewer, so I can gain access to the desktop. And I'm recording all these builds because um, I'm building the network for him. Um, and obviously, I'm going to be recording these sessions here. So so far, he's set up. Um, uh, SSD drive for boot disk, so that's 255 gigabyte um, SSD drive, and that holds the operating system and the main um, workstation pro or VMware uh, workstation pro software. So it boots nice and quick and nice and fast. Then we got a RAID 1 drive here, which is mirrored, a mirrored sort of uh, 400 gig, well, at least 500 gig drive, 512 gig drive, so that's yeah, so 476 gig. Um, where we're going to store all the um, workstation uh, stuff. So we're going to have the iOS folder we've created here. In there we're going to actually install, keep all the applications and the imaging software so we can easily access them anytime we want to rebuild or create a new virtual machine. And we're going to have a virtual machine um, folder here. We're going to keep all the virtual machines in one folder. Uh, and then if you want to create anything else on the main D drive for holding other stuff as well, you can create them and keeps it really nice and neat and tidy as well. So there we go. So that's what we're going to do so far. So for, for so first of all, um, let's just quickly run down and see what the spec this machine is, and to give you a rough idea, we're building um, not using conventional servers. We're actually building a pre-built servers. Uh, the only difference is, is uh, if it's a proper physical server, that support and um, the VMware bare bones software. But I've shown how how cheap cheaper you can purchase and still have a server environment basically. So this is a, a AMD processor. 4.7 gigahertz, 32 gigabytes uh, um, RAM installed, 64-bit operating system, running Windows 10 as standard. Uh, so we're not using any any anything else. Or actually, this one's Windows 10 Pro installed. Um, you can use this. You don't have to use Pro. You can use Windows 10 itself. Um, it doesn't need to have any domain credentials because it just needs to be a standalone PC. So let's have a look what process we've got installed. So Task Manager. More details, performance. So on the CPUs, um, oh, do want a summary guide there. Get the right one, and we want to show logical processes. So in this in this build, he's installed an AMD chip. Again, the more physical, more logical processes you've got have, the more VMWare you can install on the box. Because in theory, I like to install. Uh, like a, in theory, a virtual a virtual processor for each um, virtual server I'm building, and if you're building like site three really decent virtual servers on this machine, then I'll assign maybe two virtual ser servers each. So in theory, I could build one, two, three, four decent um, VMware machines on here, and assign them with a dual core processor each. Using the, the, on there, we've got plenty of RAM. So the 32 gig of RAM we can split up between all four machines, and that'll create a nice, powerful virtual server on this single hardware box, which is really good. Now, on the um, Ethernet ports, I think we've only got. Um, let me just check. I think is we're looking at installing um, more than one network card. So on this one here, we've got there. You go. We've got uh, five um, Ethernet cards on this so we've got a combo I think I think there's one on board Ethernet and the rest are on a co uh, what we call COD co uh, cards so we can actually team these up so we can actually um, have them running as one physical cable in theory um, so that they're a gigabyte each so that gives us five gigs of backbone now if we build on a second server like this we can do exactly the same and then, then the copying between both those boxes for a, a decent switch will be really super quick so I'm going to show you how you can um, team team all these up and have them all as like running as one cable. And the good thing is about it, if a cable gets unplugged, it only brings the speed down slightly, so it gives you redundancy there and then as well. So let's go on with this workstation install. Download download this from VMware um, themselves, and uh, you can go on that online shop, and you can install and download the installer for it. So it's Workstation Pro version 12. And this should install pretty quick because this seems to be a very quick box. So I assume I've trusted him, he's actually installed the SSD drive for the C drive and the SSD drive on the RAID 1. So it should be pretty quick. 
Welcome screen, straightforward, just a basic install, accept, next, nothing fancy here, uh, yep, next, okay, check for product updates, help improve what's fine, next, now create shortcut desktop, nope, that's fine, accept all the basic settings and then do the install, this should install pretty quickly, so we see how fast this box actually is. Pretty rapid quickly, copy new files, nice and fast. Maybe a bit of lag time because I'm using Team Viewer and recording this screen update will probably be probably won't look as fast because obviously there might be a fresh rate or, or latency on my internet connection here. Okay, it's all the virtual drivers. We'll, we'll sort we'll, we'll go through the configuration slowly. But for now, we're just going to install the basic um, installation of VMware Workstation Pro, and then we'll do some series of um, videos configuring it and getting it to run the, the virtual servers. So if you guys out there are actually doing the same sort of build and want to learn from this, then there's going to be a series of videos. So for now, we're just not going to license it. We're just going to click Finish, and then it's going to now ask for a reboot. And uh, I'm just going to say no for, a minute, for the minute. I was going to get disconnected from here. So that's now um, installed, and then you've got this VMware workstation icon on your desktop here. Uh, I think it's going to ask me to do a reboot, see if it'll run, so it's running without asking for a reboot. Um, launch trial period, 30 days, uh, enter the valid email address. So we're just going to literally just type in um, my one temporary at the moment. Continue. Yes. And then finish. There you go. So this is the actual main screen for Virtual Workstation Pro. Uh, at the moment, no virtual machines here at all. And if we go on to um, see, what I find good about this version is you can actually create a shared folder on your um, disk, and you can actually set it up so the virtual machines can share it. So you don't fear you have to use a file server, but it's always good to use a file server anyway. So main menus here, we've got file, um, virtualization of physical machines, connect to. This allows you to connect to other um, virtual workstations, or if you're running VMware on, on another server and you want to pull the actual virtual server from that machine to here, you can do that as well. So there's lots of different things. We'll go through these a uh, uh, bit later date anyway. Edit, reading machines, uh, oh, this bit we want preferences. Now what I like to do here is I like to specify where I'm going to actually install my virtual machines. I don't want my virtual machines on the same drive as the C drive. I want things to be nice and quick. So we're going to do default locations, we're going to browse and we're going to select that folder um, on the D drive that we've created uh, called virtual machines. Nice, it's that way. So when we actually then come to start setting up virtual machines, that's where it'll be the default folder where everything will be saved into it. You can actually have more than one folder, and you can have it across more than one drive. So if you want to install two more mirror drives in this, so you had an E drive, you can then balance your virtual machines across. Because the other thing virtual machines will create is a lot of disk space, a lot of disk access, because they're reading and writing to the file all the time as well. So. Um, so if you want to keep things or sort of balancing on different disks, you can do that as well. It's not a problem. Um, keep your workstation running after closes. That's a good point. So when you close this workstation software down, you want it to keep running in the background. Enable all share folders with default. We'll leave that maybe we'll customize as we go. So just doing the very basics here. Compatible with uh, EXE server. That's important uh, to leave like that on. I think you can't untick it anyway. Because um, then, if you're running in an ESC server and you're migrating off of that onto this sort of cheap, cheap, cheaper box to build, you can easily pull them across, which is really nice. So we got that ready. Uh, we just quickly just go for. I can't remember what else I change on now. I think everything I keep normally keep the same. Displays. Um, yeah, when you want to um, come out of an application, when you go into the virtual machine itself, it locks you into it. So you, you might have to remember the Shift key. Control Shift and U, which then brings you back. I'll explain that and show that at a later date anyway. Uh, updates, check for updates, check for our software components as needed. I'll leave that as normal. Also, me update VMware tools and virtual machine. I wouldn't tick this box because I've found a few updates um, are actually one, um, it started auto update and what it did, it wiped the software off. 
can now find my work machine was deleted for some reason. It was really strange. So I, I prefer to actually manually to install this to check make sure it is installed over. Like enough, when I reinstalled the software, it did pick up the um, virtual server. So it's pretty good on that side. It did recover itself really quickly. Um, but I like to keep that as manual. Um, so, there's no, so there's no hidden surprises. Uh, feedback's fine. Shared VMs. We'll talk about shared VMs a little bit later anyway. Memory. So how much RAM should the system be able to reserve for all running virtual machines? Now, I would leave that as standard because it's basically saying you can have up to 28 uh, gig of RAM available to your virtual machine you can share it across. You don't want to take too much because you want to leave some running for Windows 10 to run all this on top. When you're running bare bones um, version of this on actual physical server, you don't have to worry about this because um, it's its own operating system because we're running an operating system with a virtual machine software on top running virtual machines that we need to keep some memory aside for Windows 10 to run nice and easy. So you've got lots of RAM installed, I mean, especially if you've got like you can get this up to like 64 gig of RAM on here. You could um, say I'll keep 16 gig to Windows 10 itself, um, but in, in this stage we'll just leave it as uh, 28 gig. We could probably actually bring it down if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it standard anyway. It normally works out what it wants. Priorities on here, uh, we'll leave it standard. Devices, yeah, we'll leave that as standard anyway. Um, and we click OK. Now, when we create a virtual machine, um, it will actually install at, at, on our default drive, which is our D drive, and it will install on the virtual machines. It's nice and simple. So, this is this is cool. I'm going to get to the um, guy at the other end to install me some um, iOS. Um, files here so I think we're going to be building uh, a couple of Windows 2000 servers so I need to get them get them to copy the software onto there for me which we can then do that on another install so welcome to Virtual Workstation Pro um, built on Windows 10